Well, hey, howdy, oh, everyone. Lost Leader here. We're back in action for more Lost Hall attraction. In fact, I think it's getting to the point where I probably shouldn't be doing these all that much. But suffice to say, at least one last round, yeah? I think that's good enough. Now, if only I could remember exactly what the heck I was doing. Oh, dear Lord, look at all this mess. Too much! Too much, man! As you can see, I actually did participate in Free Comic Book uh, Day. That was all the way in May, so that's as far back as this Lost uh, Halls goes. So, I'm sorry to say that I haven't been updating this a whole, whole bunch, but for the most part, I've been busy. <laughs> that's kind of just how it's been going. I've had a lot on my plate and whatnot, but at the very least, what I could do is show what the heck I've been doing here. In fact, having some of these free comic books is pretty dang nifty, like Invader Zim showing up. Um, we got here the Nights, nights uh, Before Christmas. I'm actually going to go ahead and give this to one of my friends, because I'm pretty sure they don't have it, and they are a big fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas. So there you go, buddy. Happy birth. That's your birth. We also got here freaking Power Rangers, Legend of Korra. I think Legend of Korra also has a little thing here with arms as an additional little thing. It's got two little things to it. It's kind of, kind of freaking ridiculous. We also had two of these DC Nation things. They're only 25 cents. So I decided to buy one and I got one for free. So I was like, okay, cool, I guess. <laughs> also got the Avengers comic. I got Amazing Spider-Man. Freaking another Tank Girl. I got an Overwatch comic. But that, was, that was pretty nifty. You know, honesty, I had no idea what this is, but it looked nifty. You got this little thing. Very interesting little situation. And uh, some more. I don't know what half these comics are. I don't know for the large part of it. I haven't read them. I really, really need to. Um, doesn't help that, like, I have all these other ones here, too. Like Pokemon, Ultra Street Fighter. And then we have the comics that I actually did buy. Um... Suffice to say, if you've never done Free Comic Book Day, please do. It is a lovely tradition that comic book uh, stores do. And honestly, it does help uh, make yourself a collector in terms of comics and whatnot. Um, that's pretty much all it comes down to, honestly. And uh, I really like all the little free comics that they give you and whatnot. It's, it's really nifty, honestly. And just, yeah. Look at this mess. But we still have a little bit ways to go in terms of what we actually bought here. Not just the free comics that we met along the way. You know? <sighs> so I got my nice stack of free comics and whatnot. I got this nice little Harley Quinn mask that I'm pretty much never going to use, but going to have for nifty novelty purposes. But in terms of what I bought, as you can see, I got the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. And for those that are not aware of who Squirrel Girl Squirrel girl is she is fantastic i love her effectively enough uh squirrel girl is the most powerful being in the whole entire universe and the way that they made these new comics and whatnot with her is pretty dang interesting and i love how it's kind of like a quirky sort of um phil gooley type of uh comic over everything else definitely not like grim dark or anything like that um she definitely has pretty absurd powers in terms of what she does in comparison to who she takes on, she literally just has the power of squirrels and can talk to other squirrels. Not even joking, that's the whole entire dealio of what she does. She has beaten Dr. Doom to the point where Dr. Doom does not fight her. That's saying a lot. <laughs> Suffice to say, if you have the chance to check out the Squirrel Girl comics, please do. They're great, fantastic. I love her as a character. I can't wait for her to come up in her own little TV series that's going to be going on soon. And I personally have to go reading all these things really soon because I'm not supporting my girl nearly enough and I really should be. But suffice to say, there is another one that I have been going for. And if you didn't notice this yet, it is a Sonic uh, IDW comics. They're pretty much the reboot of the whole entire Sonic franchise for comic history, which is kind of weird when you think about it because, like, for one, Sonic is more of a comic book character than he is a video game character. And for two, how does he have so much lore? <laughs> like, he has a lot. <laughs> like, a lot, a lot. Also, like the new characters that they brought in. Uh, Tangle, or T 
Tang- yeah, I think is I think her name is Tangled or some jazz like that. She's a really interesting character for sure. Have not read any of these in all honesty. This has been sitting in the back, just just kind of like collecting dust because legit, I had just been going like I have to record for Lost Lost Halls. I got to record for Lost Halls, and I'm realizing how much it's becoming a become a deterrent in order for me to like go do these things. And I'm like, I'm sorry to say, but that's just the truth. Either way, I do want to show you this one last one of just all the things that I have here, which we got a whole bunch, y'all. Ain't just the Sonic comics that I've been ignoring, been ignoring a whole lot else, too. If I showed you these games before, I apologize because I don't remember. I honestly don't even remember picking these games up. I do remember this deal, though. Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2 does not have the game in it. It has the manual, it has a little thing, and I was just like, you know what, I gotta do it, I gotta get it, because if I get this game and it doesn't have the manual, it doesn't have the cover, I'm gonna be pissed. And getting this for like, I think, shoot, what was it for? How much was it for? I think it was maybe a dollar, three dollars, it was one of the two, it was either three dollars or a dollar. Yeah, kind of think of it, these are all three dollars. Yep. Just about, I was just like, it's worth it, honestly. Just worth getting that little thing. I was also able to find very good copies of Jack 2 and Jack 3. Very, very happy about the situation. Uh, mainly because I just like the idea of having the full original games themselves and having them completely intact. As you can see, these games were in very good condition for the most part. And I'm very, very happy that they are. So... There they go in my collection to be not used forever. Uh, kind of ironic, really, but <laughs> yeah, I suppose. I suppose that was what it comes down to. Also got a Sonic Mega Collection Plus. I don't, never really had this originally uh, for it. I had the first Sonic Collection, the Sonic Mega Collection on the GameCube. It does not have everything that the uh, Plus Collection has, so I need to actually look into it, what this has. I'm pretty sure it's just Game Gear games, though. On top of a few other little bit pieces, but you know, you never know. Could be something else there that I didn't remember seeing and whatnot. And you can also play Sonic 3 and Knuckles on this little collection, so I'll probably give that a go. Uh, as I totally forgot that I do need to play Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yeah, that's right. Lost has not played, uh, has not beaten, rather, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, so you might see that in the near future. Either way, also got this little thing. I am not a fan of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. But the misadventures, the, the game case and everything was all here. And I was like, you know what? This will surely bring somebody happiness. And I was just like, we'll just keep it here for now. We'll see what we could do with it. Because I'm sure somebody that I know will like it. And I was like, I'm sure it's worth quite a bit. So we might have some fun with that little game later on. But again, if I did get these games before, if I showed them before, I apologize. I don't remember. And if anything, they were found in, like, early May. Because I have no collection of early May. I really don't. I don't know where I am right now. The next little bit pieces I found here were actually found sometime in May. I'm pretty sure this is in, uh, like, mid-May or something like that. But suffice to say, look at this! Prime Strategy Guide! That was pretty nifty. Pretty cool. Don't think it has the little poster inside that it's supposed to have or some jazz like that, but... Yeah, still looks hecka cool in all honesty, and I'm very happy that I did get it at the very least. Really, really cool little thing here. I keep forgetting how nifty strategy guides are in all honesty, and I do plan to have some sort of collection as I go down this Goodwill hole. And yes, it was worth $1.99. I did pay that much for it. These other ones right here, they were $3 each. And you know I had to get me some Shrek Smash and Crash Racing. I mean, come on. That is the epitome of racing in the GameCube. If you could say otherwise, psh, then you're lying. That's all. That's, this is face to say facts. Shrek is love, man. Shrek is the life. <laughs> and suffice to say, I got it. I got Shrek. It's kind of weird. Now all I need is Shrek Super Slam. And then I'll, I'll be a part of the full competitive scene for Shrek. Because, yeah, that's a thing. <sighs> Also got The Incredibles here. Um, the main reason why I got it is because I heard a lot of people had a lot of love for this game. The way that The Incredibles was and everything. I honestly 
do not care for The Incredibles as much as anybody else has. I still have not seen The Incredibles uh, sequel, even though it came out on my birthday and everything. Pretty much people ditched me and just like, nah, I'm not going to go see it on your birthday because, you know, whatever. I mean, not to be a big sourpuss about it, but when I say, like, I want to go see a movie on this day in particular, either go see it, me, see it with me or I'll never see it. And that's pretty much how it happened. Either way, I'll give this game a good look. Good, good run around. I'm sure it ain't that bad or nothing. I'm sure it ain't that good either, but hey. Suffice to say, I like saying suffice to say, I like what I got here. It was a nifty little collection here that I got that day. And honestly, I keep forgetting how good of the things I get when it comes to Goodwill. Just like, mm, slice of lice here for realsies. <sighs> we got a whole bunch of more to go. I honestly couldn't tell you when I actually picked these up, but I do know this one in particular was a hazard buy. The main reason why I say it this way is because Persona 5 was going to be easy to find on the PS4, but for the PS3, not so much. And the way that I consider it, the $30 price tag wasn't so bad in comparison to just getting it otherwise. So I now have Persona 5 now. Will I play it? Well... Sweetheart, that's going to be a long-ass time. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I plan to play Persona 1, Persona 2, Persona 2, Persona 3, Persona 4. All of those before I play Persona 5. So that's going to be a long-ass while. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm doing it that way. I got it. Because if I don't, Persona 1 was never going to be played. Persona 2 is going to be harder to play. And well, yeah... It's hard to get back to uh, older games when you play the newer, better ones. Speaking of newer, better ones, though. <laughs> I like this game so much. Now, for those not familiar with the situation here, I don't like the first Dangaropa. I really, really don't. It's, it's such a game that just ugh, has at me for like a number of reasons. Dangaropa 2, I like a whole bunch better. It, it brought me into the franchise properly. And Danganronpa V3 made me decide to stay and actually pursue more Danganronpas. Which is kind of ironic when you think about it. But I do have an LP on my channel. Please go check it out. I thought it was pretty nifty. I loved all these characters for the most part, except for this dude. But that's not his fault. Also, really love Maki Roll. Maki Roll's the best. I, I love her. She's the best, man. For real. I instantly fell in love with her, like, the very beginning, and just what she does is great. So, yeah, hopefully you know what's on the dinner plate, because god dang it, man. This is a fun-ass game. I love this game. And yes, I did buy it pretty much to play it, and I bought it, like, sometime in June, so I could play in July, and it was all July. <laughs> this is a long game, y'all. A really long game. Not as long as this, though. Whew. That's a longer game. Not looking forward to that. I know most people do, but I don't look forward to a lot of bigger things. Ugh. Did I show this before? If I showed it before, please tell me, because I probably did. Either way, this was a hazard buy. I decided to buy it. I thought it was nifty and cute. And yeah, cool. But Hyrule Warriors was a hard, hard thing to like go do. And I don't only mean that in the sense that I had to replay everything. And then I had DLC to go with. And then on top of all that, I just, it costs a lot of money. It costs like $60. But you know what? With everything on the disc, or rather on the cartridge, from both situations, I was like, you know what? It's fine. I'll get it. I got it. I played a good amount of it. I like it a whole bunch. I really, really do. I like this. Um, it's definitely a couch potato game for sure, by and large. I do plan to actually do a full playthrough of it at some point in my life. I don't know when that will happen, but yes, this is definitely one of the games out there on the Switch that I played far more when it came out. And I got plenty of more Switch games to tell you. Plenty of more where that came from. I make it sound like it's a bad thing to have Switch games, but honestly, I just... I did this to myself. Next up we have here is a PS2. I actually got it for half the price what it says on here. So it wasn't $24.99, it was $12.49. And um, if you haven't noticed already, the little tray thing is busted. 
it does not have the proper cover that it's supposed to have. But I have checked, it does open properly and everything, so it should be an okay PS2 for the most part. I will double check with y'all really quick, like, to see if it actually works. Um, we'll have a little testy thingy over there. But for the most part, I got it because it was, like, super, super, like, cheap. Like, $12 for a PS2? Heck yeah! I do that all the time, every time. Now, hopefully you work, buddy. Please tell me you work, because I know there's a game inside you. I opened you. I think it was Sims 2? Whatever. <sighs> Open a sesame! This next little bit that I got here was actually from a retro game uh, shop called Retro Game Camp Akihabara. Um, or rather, from uh, Akihabara. Um, I assume this is all Japanese port because, hey, look at this! Fire Emblem in Japanese, and then Bonk in Japanese, and Mega Man 5 in Japanese. And why do I get these all in Japanese, you may ask? Well, simply to say, it's less expensive that way. Also, the Game Boy? can play Japanese games. Also, the SNES can play Japanese games if you modify it. And the only way that you modify it is by just removing these little things, these little nod points that you have to get rid of. I still need to actually go do that, but I did decide to get the first uh, Fire Emblem on the SNES, or I think second. Technically the first one that's original. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, I did decide to get Rockman uh, 5 mainly because... Rockman 5 for the Game Boy is actually one of the best uh, Mega Man games out there. And it actually does not have Wily as the final boss, believe it or not. Pretty dang cool, if you ask me. Definitely a game that I do want to play on the channel for sure. At the very least, to like play and beat it. Um, just have a nice little nifty thing. I do have the game on the virtual console. That's how I was able to beat it first and foremost. But... This will be an interesting little twist because it's in Japanese! I won't know how to deal with it! I also got bonk because I was just like, eh. It's, it's kind of cool, kind of nifty. I like the idea of having another game in Japanese and whatnot. I would definitely like to have more games in Japanese for sure. And I'm probably going to come back here to the store. It is in Little Tokyo in uh, LA, just so you all know, so... If you do happen to go to uh, L.A. and Little Tokyo, or Little Tokyo and L.A., however you say it, you can probably find this place. Really, really, really nifty store. I liked it. A whole bunch. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you buy a bunch of games with me? Do, 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 do. That's right. I got me some Pearly and Marina Amiibos. They're nifty and sweet, and I love them. They're super cute, Arena. That's for dang sure. Also got Octopath Traveler because for some reason they came out on the same date. Don't know what exactly that says about all this, but hey, nifty, right? Also, if you're wondering here, I did get Blaze Blue uh, Cross Tag Battle. I have yet to actually play it properly, but I was like, you know what? Switchboard seems pretty interesting. It did come out during the summertime when the weather is hot, and I just like, you know what? This kind of hits the spot. So I got myself another fighting game, because, hey, why not? I guess. Either way, it was a nifty little buy um, for the end of, end of June, slash beginning of July. But little did I know, July would not have the end of me. Because, oh, there's a lot more coming along the way. So originally thought for July, I was going to pick up these two games, Sonic Mini Plus and Code Princess EX. Um, I thought it was pretty nifty and neat. Also, Sonic Mania came with another reversible cover, so let's go go look at that real quick, like, boom, baby, right there. Also, if you open it up, look at that nifty little thing. Really, really cool. 
I liked it a whole bunch. And, um, <laughs> I may not like Sonic Mania as a whole in comparison to Sonic Forces. Yes, I know that is a weird statement for a lot of people. But I did like that they got a physical copy of the game finally. And I did state to my friend before, if they get a physical copy, I will definitely buy it. Because I thought it'd be interesting to actually go get and buy George it was. It really, really was. This is the other game I decided to get for um, July was Code of Princess EX. It came at right out of the tippy 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 end. Uh, the freaking uh, came out July 31st. Uh, really, really cool nifty game. It is a beat-em-up. It is not the best beat-em-up, but it has a lot of interesting character designs, um, if you know what I'm saying. And also lesbians. These two are gay for each other. Just <laughs> just don't worry about it. They really are. Uh, for the most part, not the best game out there, but it's something I did want to support because I do want more from Coda Princess, and I like to support this company for sure. And uh, I'm probably going to get the little crossover game that they're going to like be putting out for the Switch and everything, too. Hopefully it's the bestest to beat the restus. But you're probably running like, okay, so that was like your end goal. Or didn't I see other games and whatnot? And like, yeah, you'd be right. But the reason why I pointed out this way is because I, they just plopped in my lap effectively. I didn't steal them or nothing, but oh my God, were they a steal. Oh. So for those of you that don't know out there, Target had a sale going on. Several sales, in fact, to the point where it actually broke their little sale pedometer or whatever the hell you would call it. So on top of buying something $50 or more, you get $20 off that. That was the first original coupon to have out there. Like, oh, hey, that's pretty nifty and cool. I'll take it. And then you could actually add more coupons onto that. So they had another coupon out there, 15% off. I was like, hey, that's cool. And then people were saying, hey, you could actually add four more of those 15% off to have it fully off. It was ridiculous. So 15% off, 15% off, 15% off, 15% off. I effectively got all these games here. All these games for $50. <laughs> this is like $160 worth of games. And I got it for $50. It was fantastic. Ah, I loved it so much. <sighs> and unfortunately, because of this, I could not get myself a dress. And I really wanted to get a dress. I really, really did. And it was so sad. But at the same time, I was like, this is a one chance opportunity in life. They're not going to like flub up again like this. And you know what? I'm fine with what I got here. I did mean to get this game and this one. And this one. And this one. And I all got them for a super, super duper cheap price. The price was just like this game, in all honesty. So yeah, I got way more Switch games now. And way more everything else. It's uh, kind of ridiculous. So there you have it, folks. All of my lost haul that I need needing to catch up on for the life of me. <sighs> As you can see, I've been at least enough busy to like... Put on a show, but I think for now, Lost Hall is going to have to be put on an indefinite hiatus until something really interesting comes along, or I have a better way of recording all of this and whatnot. Either way, it's been a fun little dealio to actually go ahead and do these Lost Halls for sure. They do require a bit of time and effort, but I was glad to do it, and I'm not going to exactly stop doing them. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of my games that I collect and my collection itself on Instagram. It's going to be a little bit more open over there and it will have more frequent updates for sure when it comes to those little bit pieces and whatnot. Cause God dang, dude, oh, I can't keep doing this to myself. All these games, oh, all this twisting and turning. Oh, oh God. Okay. Save me.